Hello everyone. Let's begin to develop our first mobile app for Android systems. The app we are about to create today is called a Flashlight. Using this project, I want to show you the major workflow of developing an Android app. Along the way, you could meet some programming languages. Understanding those languages is not required this week. We will have a, a particular lecture for programming language a few weeks later. Every developer wants to get rich by creating a popular app. When people talk about the business success of mobile app industry, they will immediately think about some famous mobile games, such as Angry Birds or Clash of Clans. One common mistake that many beginner developers make is that when they just start learning mobile app development, they want to go big. They want their ideas or projects to be as big as Angry Birds or even bigger. However, a mobile game requires a lot of resources or skills. For instance, you need to know how to design graphics, or you can hire a graphic designer. You need a customer support team, or a group of programmers. Usually, a beginner developer doesn't have so many resources or uh, skills to transform such a big idea into a real app. Finally, a big dream turns into an empty dream at the end. So instead of going big at the beginning, I suggest everybody to pay more attention to smaller projects. If your app is useful to the customers, it can still go viral and bring you a lot of profits, even though it is simpler and smaller compared to other bigger apps. And the Flashlight app is a successful example of using this kind of strategy. I talked to a system engineer from Apple. He told me that back in 2006, when Apple began to accept the individual developers' mobile apps, the one that got most attention was the Flashlight app. What can this app do for the customers? Sometimes you will travel to some dark places. For instance, you just got in your hotel room at night. You don't know where the light switch is. You want to use your mobile phone as a flashlight to get more lights in the room. And the Flashlight app can help you light up the room. Let me show you how this app works. Let's go to the emulator and launch the Flashlight app. Once you launch the app, you will get a white screen. Because it's shiny white, so you will get more light on your phone. There is also a button on the screen. If you finish using the app, you can turn it off and then turn it back on. Let's try it again. Turn it off and then turn it back on. This is such a simple app, but if you think about it, this is a really good idea. I heard that the original copy of Flashlight app has sold over 1 million copies at the price of 99 cents per download. Today I want to use this simple but interesting app to show you the major steps of creating a mobile app for the Android system. Let's launch Eclipse IDE. Once the Eclipse software is started, the first step is the IDE software asks you where do you want to save your project. The folder is called a workspace. Usually we don't want to change the directory or location of the workspace, we will keep the original location. And then we click OK to start the IDE software. This is what the IDE software looks like. On the left, you have the Package Explorer panel. It lists all the available projects you have in your folder, in your workspace folder. On the right, you will have the blank workspace. In the future, we will design the user interface 
and the programming code in this area. In the lower right, you have the performance control dashboard. In the future, you can check the errors of your app in this area. Now let's create a new flashlight app. Go to the upper left corner and click on File, and then click New. Choose Android Application Project. First, let's give a name to our app. Let's call this first app, Flashlight. As you can see here, you can use spaces in an app name, but uh, you shouldn't use any special symbols in an app name. The IDE doesn't accept the special symbols, such as the dollar sign. When you give a name to an app, the IDE will also automatically create two new names for you. The first one is the project name. The second one is the package name. What is a project name? This is a name for your project folder. After you create an app, this project name will be listed in the package explorer on the left. If you want to modify an app, you can look for the project name in the future in the package explorer on the left. What about the package name? It looks like a domain name. This is exactly what it is for. In the future, if you publish your app on Google Play Store, you will have a unique web page for your app. And this package name will show up in the web address of that web page because I don't ask you to publish the app in this class. So you don't need to change the package name. In the lower section, we have a several drop-down list. We only care about two important drop-down lists. The first one is the minimum required SDK. The second one is the target SDK. What are these two for? As you may have known, there are a lot of versions of Android operating systems, from Android 1.5 to Android 5.0 Plus. Not every Android operating system can run your app. For instance, if you design an app for Android 3.0, then the lower version of Android operating system may not be able to run your app. So here you need to specify what is the minimum level of operating system that can run your app without any problem? Of course, the target SDK specifies the ideal Android operating system that can run your mobile app. For a simple mobile app like a flashlight, we don't need to change the required SDK or the target SDK. We just keep them as they are. Now let's click Next. On this window, we need to check Create Customer Launcher icon, Create Activity, and Create Project in Workspace options. We need to check these three options. The launcher icon is a smaller picture that the user can see on their mobile devices. So they can click on that icon and start your mobile app. The second option is Create Activity. What is an activity in a mobile app? Remember, an activity is a blank screen that you can see. When you create an activity, you will create a new blank screen. The blank screen is like a stage where you can put on your shows. You can add the buttons, add pictures, text on the blank screen. In other words, you add all of these controls on an activity. The third one is to specify where you want to save the project. We want to save it into the workspace folder. So we want to check create project in workspace. Now click next. Here we want to specify our customized icon. So the user will see this little picture on their mobile devices and they can press it to start our mobile app. Here I already created the icon. On the right, you will see the preview of the icon. Remember, if you develop an app for mobile phones, 
the size of the icon must be 48 by 48 dp. I already created the customized icon and uploaded it to eCollege, so you can download the icon directly. You don't need to worry about the size of the icon at this stage. In the lower section, we can specify the background color of the mobile app once it is started. For the flashlight app, once the user starts the app, we want the background color to be white, right? So we can keep the default color, the white color, and then click Next. On this window, the IDE gives you an option. To let you choose, you want to create a blank screen with only one section or with several sections. For this simple app, we want to create a blank screen with only one section. So choose the blank activity. Choose the blank activity. And then click Next. Here we want to give a name to the new activity or to the new blank page. You can keep the original name, the main activity for this app. Now let's click uh, Finish to see the designer interface. After all of the setup, we finally reached the developer interface. Let's start from the Package Explorer. Now in the list, you can see a new project name called uh, First App Flashlight. This is exactly what we saw when we created this project, right? In the future, if you want to modify the app, you can look for this project name, First App Flashlight. On the right, you have two new windows. The first one is the uh, activity underscore main dot XML. This is the user interface design window. We can perform all the graphical design in this window. The other window is called the main activity dot Java. A lot of uh, programming codes are in this window. It looks a little messy to us right now, but I think after you uh, learn the programming lecture, you will understand what each section means. Let's talk about the package explorer, the project package first. Next to the package name, the project name, you, you can see a little triangle. You can expand or close the project. There are a lot of folders under the, this project, right? But we only care about two folders in this class. The first folder is called a RES folder. The second folder is SRC folder. We put all the pictures, the graphical designs under the RES folder. We put all the programming code under the SRC folder. Actually, if you close the two windows on the right, if you want to open the graphical user interface design window, you can open the whole project first and then go to RES folder. Under RES, you will see a layout folder. Under layout, you can see a XM file. This is the graphical user interface design file. Double click it, you can see the user interface design window show up on the right. If you want to open the programming code page, you can go to SRC folder and then open the little triangle next to the package name. Then you will see the main activity.java. Double click it, you can see the programming code window show up on the right. Now let's design the flashlight app. Let's go to the user interface design window first. You can maximize this little window. By default, the IDE will give you a hello world greeting method. We don't need the hello world method, so you can click on this hello world text and then press delete button on your keyboard. It will disappear. On this activity, we do want to add a button on top of the blank screen. Where can we find the buttons? 
Actually, if you look at the left side of the user interface design window, you will see a palette option. Under palette, you have uh, several buttons. You can also choose some other text boxes. You can also choose the layouts, the pictures, and uh, the time and date pickers, and so on. We call all of these buttons, text boxes, pictures, under the palette option, controls. Click on the form widget control. You will see a toggle button. This is what we want. Select the toggle button and then drag it to the user interface design window. Drag it to the activity or the blank screen. Now you can see in this app, we got a toggle button now. We have completed the user interface design part. Let's take a look at what the app looks like now. Let's try out our app on the emulator. First, on the left, in the Package Explorer list, click on the project name. Make sure that you click on the project name first. And then click the Run As button to initiate the emulator. Click, click on the Run As button. The IDE asks you to save the current uh, uh, design. Click Save to save all the changes. This is what the app looks like now. We have a toggle button in the app, so let's try it out. Every time when we click on the toggle button, the text of the button changes, but uh, the color doesn't switch as expected. How can we change the color? At this moment, we need to add the programming code. Let's go back to the IDE to modify the programming code. Where should we go to find the programming codes? Yes, it is under the SRC folder. Remember the SRC folder. Open the project and then double click on SRC folder. Under this folder, you can see mainactivity.java. Double click on this file. This is a place where we can add or modify the programming code for this app. I have already created the programming codes for you, so you can download the file from eCollege. Once you get the code, copy all of the code, and then go back to IDE. Remove all the code except for the first line. Remove all the code in the IDE except for the first line. Keep the first line, the package com.example.firstapp flashlight. Keep the first line and paste all the codes I give to you into the IDE. And then save all the changes. We have completed the programming part. Now we got the user interface. We also got the programming code. But uh, we really didn't make the connection between the user interface and the programming code. So the IDE doesn't know what are the programming codes for. In other words, the IDE cannot manipulate the toggle button or the color switch by using the programming code. How can we make the connection? First, let's go to the user interface design window. Click on the toggle button in your app to select this toggle button. And then on the right, you will find the property panel. In the property panel, find the ID option. ID option. Go to the ID option box and remove toggle button one. Give a new name to this toggle button. In this case, let's call it light switch. Light switch. Remember, you should keep the at plus id forward slash. Should keep the at plus id forward slash. After the forward slash, you add a new name for this toggle button. In this case, we call it light switch. You can give other name to this toggle button, 
but uh, for this case I use light switch. Notice that there is no space in the name for a toggle button. You shouldn't use any spaces or uh, special symbols for the name of a toggle button here. So after this, let's click on the user interface design window and save all the changes. On this window, make sure that the new name for the toggle button is light switch. And then check the update references. Check this option. And then click OK. And click uh, continue if you see the warning method. And then save all the changes. At this moment, the toggle button name has been changed to light switch. Now we need to go to the programming codes to inform the programming code that we give a new name to the toggle button. Let's click on the mainactivity.java tab to open this window. In this programming code, you want to find a statement. The statement is find a view by ID. After find a view by ID, you can see a light switch is between the parentheses. This is how we make the connection between the controls on the user interface and the programming logic. We create a toggle button called light switch on the user interface. And then we create a programming ID called light switch as well in the programming code. So the IDE and the Android operating system will know that all the functions in the programming codes should be applied to the toggle button called light switch on the user interface. This is how the user can see the color switch when they click on the toggle button. What if I change the name of the toggle button in the user interface design window? For instance, now I want to change the name of the toggle button to my light switch. Still, you want to keep the add plus id forward slash. After the forward slash, we give a new name to the toggle button, my light switch. And then we click on the user interface design window. Click on yes to save all the changes. Click OK on this window. Before this name change, we have created a connection between the toggle button on the user interface window and the programming codes by using the find view by ID statement. So after this name change, if you go back to the programming codes, you can find that light switch is also changed to my light switch. A very important point is all the names for the controls and all the programming codes are case sensitive. In other words, you must use exactly the same letters or cases for both user interface design and the programming codes. Otherwise, you will get an error in your app. For instance, in the programming code, I change the letter S from uppercase to lowercase. You will see a red line show up under my light switch. You also will see a red X show up on the left. These indicate this is an error. The error is you use different cases for the user interface design and the programming code. To fix this, you change the letter S to uppercase. So now you have the same letters, same cases for both the toggle name and the programming code. So remember this important point. Let's save all the changes and then try out our app on the emulator. This is what the app looks like now. We have a toggle button in the app. So if we want to turn off the light, click on the toggle button, the light is off. The background color changes to black. If we want to turn on the light, Click on the toggle button again, you will see the background color changes to white 
and the light is back on. If you go to the home page, you will see the icon show up as well. Also, the name of this app is First App Flashlight. This is what we set up in the first step. Let's try it again. Turn it off, then turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. We have finished the first app. Android apps have been highly developed in recent years. Obviously, it is impossible for you to get a million dollars by selling the flashlight app nowadays. But uh, this simple app really shows the major workflow of developing an app for an Android system. What are the major steps of developing an Android app? First, we want to design the user interfaces. We want to add the toggle buttons, pictures, text into the blank screens. Where can you find the user interface design windows? They are under the RES folder. The second step is to design the programming codes. In this week, you are only required to remember where you can find those programming codes. They are under the SRC folder. The last step is very important. We want to make the logical connections between controls such as toggle buttons on the user interface window and the programming codes. How can we make the connection? We use the find view by ID statement. These are the major steps of creating an Android app. When you develop apps in the rest of this semester, you will find we basically will follow these three major steps, no matter what kind of app we develop. Before we conclude today's lecture, let's go back to the IDE and open the user interface design window, the activity underscore main window. What we see on this window are graphical buttons and screens. It is very convenient for human developers to use graphical controls. But how does the Android system understand these graphical controls? The trick is here. Underneath the window, if you click the activity underscore main dot XML file, you will find that all the graphical controls will be translated into some codes. These codes are called extensible markup language. And this is the knowledge I will introduce to you next week. This concludes today's lecture. I will see you soon in the next one.